Wouldn't it be cool to observe a great white in an aquarium? Why can't we? From their very strict needs to their enormous size, great whites have an enormous impact on their environment. Here are 10 reasons you won't see a great white behind glass. Part of the food chain. Think of the great white sharks as not only a top predator in the sea, but also an important part of the food chain. Great whites have been around for more than 450 million years, 200 million years before dinosaurs, making them a key part in keeping the ocean system healthy. They need to eat a lot. Sure, sharks dine on animals smaller than them, but it is an important part of the food chain. With their ability to balance the ocean's ecosystem by maintaining the species below them, they play a vital role in keeping the ocean healthy. By removing the weak or sick species, they also keep balance with competitors, helping to ensure diversity. If they were to be removed from the ocean altogether, it would alter the feeding habits and diets of other species. Underwater plants such as seagrass and coral reefs would also be affected, with both declining, throwing the ecosystem into chaos. Removing sharks from the coral reef ecosystem would mean larger predatory fish would increase and feed on the herbivores, increasing algae, further polluting the oceans, and directly affecting the coral reef systems which are already suffering from climate change. So although they may get a bad rap, the great white is a vital piece of the ecological puzzle. Too smart to be caged. Although TV shows and movies make out sharks to be big scary predators, they are in fact quite misunderstood. With more than 400 shark species in the world, great whites are one of the most recognizable. But they are not just mindless drones, and instead are known to create mental maps that allow them to sense not only magnetic fields, but to read the signals from ocean currents, determine water temperature, and even smell other creatures. A self-sufficient species, these animals have also been known to learn how to recognize shapes and optical illusions that they can remember for at least a year. All of this swimming and global mapping means that putting them in an aquarium is not going to be enough for them. A study done on juvenile sharks showed that they were able to recognize and remember shapes after being kept in a special holding tank into which images were projected onto the walls. Four sharks were taught to choose a triangle, and when they did so, they received a small piece of food for pressing their nose on the triangle-shaped button. The study done by a university in Germany showed that recognition, visual cues, and translating them into earning a reward was an experiment that provided surprising results. However, like orcas, in captivity they don't do very well. Their size Ranging from 47 meters in length and weighing up to 400 kilograms, sharks are one of the largest predators of the ocean. Although their narrow pointed snout, pectoral fins, and dorsal fin are distinct properties characteristics of the shark, it is their size that proves to be a downfall to keeping them in captivity. Because these aquatic animals have to constantly swim forward to allow water to pass over their gills to provide them oxygen, any aquarium would need to have a massive tank to keep the shark not only happy, but healthy. Sharks also travel over huge distances in the wild, with one female shark once documented to have traveled from Africa to Australia and back again, taking just 9 months to travel to 12,400 miles. In 2004, the Monterey Bay Aquarium kept a great white shark alive for 198 days. Holding 1 million gallons of water and reaching a depth of 35 feet, the tank was specially designed for open ocean animals. With the shark only measuring 4 feet long, it was much smaller than the average adult great white, which measures around 15 feet. Because it was much smaller, the shark mostly consumed fish instead of the usual diets of seals, sea turtles, and small whales that more mature great whites eat. Although this allowed for an easier time feeding the animal, the tight dietary needs of the great white were not the only problem. The staff at the Monterey Bay Aquarium later moved the shark into a 4 million gallon pen that allowed them to monitor it before they transported it from Southern California to the Monterey Bay campus. But within six months of capture and display, the aquarium decided to release the shark into the wild after it attacked two other sharks in captivity. Over the years, the aquarium continued to display other infant great whites, but none of them lasted the same amount of time as the original great white did. Feeding Rituals Sharks need live prey to stay alive, so having to continually keep them in seals, sea lions, dolphins, and whale corpses, their favorite foods, is not only difficult, but might turn away aquarium guests who might not want to watch the particularly gruesome spectacle of shark feedings. 
A carnivorous creature, sharks feed on smaller animals including squids, rays, and other fish. They are also known to catch turtles and seabirds, preferring a fat-rich prey. This means that aquarium staff would need to procure a variety of food for any sharks they keep in captivity. Beyond that, a shark has particular feeding habits, using their electroreceptors to locate food. Because they tend to stalk their prey, and then inflict a deadly bite and wait for the animal to bleed out before eating it, it would make for a particularly gruesome display for the general public coming to visit these predators. Even though most people have a picture of a malevolent feeding machine, great whites are actually finicky eaters. Scientists found that some great whites even engage in ritualized competition over kills with the two slapping their tails on the sea surface to determine who is the winner. Some researchers even found that when the sharks are unable to capture food, they get visibly frustrated and agitated, and can even become sad and dejected. It makes sense that without the ability to hunt in the open ocean, sharks in captivity would lose their sense of hunting and normal behavior and stop eating altogether. Affecting the Economy Although the environmental and ecological effects are more important than money, it's hard to disregard how removing sharks from the oceans would indirectly affect the economy. A study done in North Carolina showed that by losing great white sharks in their waters, stingray populations were increased, resulting in more bay scallops being eaten by predators and fisheries having to be closed. Without scallops to eat, the rays moved on to other bivalves, including clams that were used in many restaurants. Food aside, sharks are a large draw for ecotourists. In the Bahamas, dive tourism can make up to $250,000 by having a single live reef shark in the ocean for tourists to visit. But when caught by fishermen, sharks are only worth $50 to the fishermen who caught it. Similarly, a whale shark in Belize has been known to bring in $200 million over its lifetime to tourists who want to swim with and see the sharks in their natural habitat. Although the health and safety of these animals are most important, there is a definite connection between sharks and the economy. A Protected Species One of the most dangerous predators in the ocean, sharks are not only feared but protected. They are mostly illegally hunted with the capture and killing of great whites against the law. Protected in California waters since 1994 and in the American Atlantic waters since 1997, the great white is one of 10 other shark species that are protected from fishing in American waters. But why is such a fearsome predator so protected? Dating back more than 400 million years, sharks are much older than dinosaurs. Their unique senses of smell, hearing, touch, taste, sight, and even electromagnetism make it one of the top predators in the ocean. Even though the image of a shark in the water strikes fear in the heart of many people, the only real threat to their survival are humans. Often killed by getting caught in long lines and trawlers, they are also sometimes victims of illegal poaching for those who want to sell their fins for soup. Sport fishermen also sometimes target sharks to obtain their jaws as trophies. With an estimated 100 million sharks killed every year by fisheries, it would be a shame to see these ancient predators become extinct in our lifetime. Tank Confusion Many fish, including sharks, have evolved to travel fast and for great distances in the open ocean. Glass enclosures such as tanks and aquariums prove to be not only dangerous but fatal to those sharks brought into places like SeaWorld and San Francisco's Steinhardt Aquarium in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. When sharks were kept in glass enclosures, they tended to ram into walls and injure themselves. It is believed that being surrounded by glass could confuse or overload the shark's electroreception system that helps them to sense electrical signals given off by fish in the open ocean. Although the Monterey Bay Aquarium once housed a great white shark in 2004, the large tank and intensive support wasn't enough to keep the shark safe. Even though they used a smaller baby shark, it didn't stop it from having health issues, and after 190 days, they released the shark and stopped hosting them in 2011. A glass tank inside a building just seems like an unnatural place for a shark, so although it might be nice to see one up close, knowing how they can suffer makes keeping them in the wild seem that much more important. Active Behavior The fact the Great Whites are not only solitary fish but are active both day and night would make it a strenuous task to keep them happy if they were to be in captivity. The fact that they also sometimes jump out of the water to look around for prey would also make it difficult to keep them contained in a small tank. A powerful and aggressive predator, great whites are a dominant species, so it would make it difficult for them to be placed in the vicinity of any other marine animals. 
A predator at the top of the food chain, any worries about sharks attacking people don't seem to be a reason not to add them to the roster at a local museum. But these large fish are simply ones that should not be tamed. Their gills aren't only to help them breathe, their gills are also used to remove carbon dioxide waste from the shark's body. Because other shark species have different methods of breathing, it is safe for them to be kept in aquariums. Both nurse and bullhead sharks use their mouth muscles to draw water into their mouths and over their gills, which allows them to breathe while still. Others use a method called ram ventilation, where they swim with their mouths open, pushing water through their gills. Great whites, as well as makos and whale sharks, use this method to breathe, which is why if they stop swimming, they can die. Keeping them comfortable. Found in both tropical coastal waters and even cold water, great whites thrive everywhere from the coast of North America, from Newfoundland to southern Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean, and from Alaska to southern Mexico and the Pacific. They also dwell in waters of South Africa, the Mediterranean, Japan, and Oceania. With such a varied locale, it would take a lot of work to adapt an indoor habitat for great whites. In the open ocean, they tend to inhabit water up to 1,200 meters deep, even going so far as to swim up to 1,875 meters deep. Needing such a varied habitat, it seems like it would take a lot of trial and error to get the climate right. A study done in 2014 estimated that the region between 660 and 3300 feet below the ocean's surface had 10 times more fish than originally believed. With colder water at deeper distances, sharks do this to take advantage of abundant prey in the ocean's depths. A hostile community Even though sharks are at the top of the food chain, that doesn't mean that other fish can't be a threat to them. Triggerfish, angelfish, and puffers can all injure smaller sharks. Figuring all this out in an aquarium doesn't seem like an easy feat. If the shark is big, it will eat everything, and if it's small enough to fit in an aquarium, there are many things that can be harmful to it. It might seem strange to think that a smaller fish could injure a shark, but if one were to accidentally put a porcupine fish in the same tank as a shark, it could prove deadly for the predator. Photos of a hungry shark who tried to swallow a spiny porcupine fish are evidence enough that the pair can be dangerous together. After the shark suffocated on its supper, the porcupine fish became stuck halfway in the shark's mouth and blocked the predator's gills. Just because the great white is one of the most feared fish in the ocean, that doesn't mean there aren't things that make them vulnerable. Maybe knowing that will make you a little less leery the next time you go for a swim and see a shadow dart below the surface. Or not. Thanks for watching. What do you think about great whites? Do you like aquariums? Let us all know what you think in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to Taltanic for some more awesome videos.